Hi, I'm back. I really missed being with you guys and God was um, just so gracious to use our friends to give us a refresher time away. Maui was incredibly beautiful and uh, you know, I understand a little bit of what it means to labor, to enter into rest. It was um, parts of it were just hard. I felt almost guilty at times because so much of our nation was, um, well, our nation is just struggling, as you know, right now in general. But then with so many of you in um, the South and Texas area, man, I, I just, I'm just, I feel the word is broken. I just feel broken hearted. And I'm sure you all feel that way for all of our um, brothers and sisters there that I, I, the stories are still coming out of what you guys have been through. And um, something doesn't sit right with me about how all of that unfolded. And I just pray that once again, that justice is seen. And clearly we are in a time of, um, you know, waking up as a nation to what, what actually is, um, what the enemy has prepared. And I don't mean people, I mean, um, I mean the enemy. <laughs> He does not want what God is saying is coming next, and he's fighting it with everything that he has, which is um, some some broken people that are partnering with him. So anyway, all that to say, I'm glad to be back with you, and I'm ready to jump back in. I was blown away, as I'm sure many of you were, um, with our daughter Justice and all that she brought to the table. She conquered uh, some little you know, light subject matter like understanding the current breakdown in culture, learning to love millennials, neglecting the fundamental relationships, feminism, abortion, the breakdown of the nuclear family, light topics, right? Um, where did all the men go? How feminism became an attack on the male identity, becoming uneducated, how our education system has hijacked the compassion of a generation. She, um, spoke like only someone from her generation could and and just stirred compassion in us and understanding of how did we get where we are obviously it wasn't exhaustive and she said it wasn't going to be exhaustive but it was her perspective and um i love her love for learning and her desire to um help the older end of our generation really understand what um, what her generation is facing. So I, you know, I'm so proud of all of our kids and, and I've learned so much from every single one of our, our children and, um, you know, how they process life and where they are in their journey with God. And our family just has all kinds of discussions about all these kinds of things. And we've had to learn to really respect and love each other with um, where each of us are right now. And some of us are on seemingly, you know, way different ends of the spectrum politically and maybe spiritually. And, um, you know, I've, I've learned just as a mom in all of that to, to give them space to do that because that's what God I've watched you know, as a parent, you look at the face of God and you say, what do you think about this? Where are you with this? And with, with this kid's journey and this kid's journey and this kid's journey, because we have five of them and then the ones that they love too. So I can never find worry on his face. When I look at his face concerning each of my kids, I can't find worry on his face. And sometimes I wish he, I wish he looked more worried. He's just at peace because he knows what he's working in them. And, um, and, and if he feels that way, then, then why wouldn't we as the church with where he has us collectively as society, he's a good dad. He's a good parent. He knows how to give us the best possible opportunity to grow up and to grow up into him. 
And so, um, you know, all of my kids are in different places on that journey. I so respect where Justice is on her journey. And um, I'm just glad that you got to glean from where she is and hear some of her perspectives. So it's good. God's good. So we start um, a couple of our themes that we have going. This is our week that we're going to finish up um, with our primary focus being on Jesus versus the Father or the Holy Spirit. Next month will be Holy Spirit. Our first month in January was the Father. And so we've been about all things Jesus. We're going to delve even deeper into that this week. Um, I've been listening to this song on repeat since we got home yesterday. Um, my dad sent this song to me that I'll give you at the end, but oh, it's, it's so good. It's just Jesus. Um, so what I was hearing for this week for our identity, because I felt like the Lord said every week, I want you to just tune in to another aspect of your identity as my sons and as my daughters. And I didn't like this one as much, <laughs> but the more I got into it, the more he just, I, I came to peace with it. But um, this is not a negative thing, but I, I heard him say that we're his broken ones. We're his broken ones. I remember when um, Glory, you know, I've always loved taking walks on the beach with my kids, but especially when they were little and we would hunt for shells. seems like there was more shells when I was young, but um, I, Glory was the only one who, when I would walk her on the beach, she would look for the broken shells. And, I, you know, here I was looking so hard for, you know, any perfect shell I could find that, that was whole. And, you know, she kept picking up all the little broken ones. And I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was basically like the broken ones are beautiful, Mommy. And um, I just, I, I know that's how the Father sees us. And, you know, Jesus embraced the the aspect of himself that was broken even before he was broken um you know on the cross for us i think it was prophesied in isaiah um his bones would not be broken but but the, basically his heart would be broken for us and in psalms 34 18 um, it says the lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Um, I'm gonna see that in the Passion Translation, Psalm 34, 10, um, no, 34, 18. There we go. 34, 18 is, the Lord is close to all whose hearts are crushed by pain and he is always ready to restore the repentant one and when you look up that word broken um, in the Old Testament Hebrew it it does mean crushed I wrote down some of the definitions from Hebrew wrecked like a car wreck wrecked crushed ruptured maimed shattered and then I like this one bring to birth. That is definitely a, <laughs> a feeling that I remember from childbirth is feeling like you are going to break in half. Um, the pressure is so intense that you literally feel like you're breaking. And um, there is a broken hearted place that is a part of this earthly experience that um, you know, it's part of preparing us for eternity. There is a breaking that happens here. And if we, if we do it in and with God, there's a beauty to it. And there's a fragrance that comes from it that is so precious to God. And I feel like even, um, you know, sometimes we don't learn things if we don't experience them. It's not enough just for someone to tell you something. You have to experience it. And I believe that there's a breaking happening 
collectively in the earth right now that is going to cause us to remember things that we need to remember for many generations to be able to stay and maintain a place of freedom. And it looks very um, vulnerable right now. We look very vulnerable, like the breaking is is to a um, is to a death. But I don't believe that. I be I believe that the the crushing and the breaking, the the broken heartedness that we feel over what is happening in America right now, is a breaking that is a good breaking, and. And we are birthing justice. We are birthing our own redemption. And it's, um, it's ultimately the Father's redemption over us. Uh, I'll just read a few quick scriptures here. Luke 20, verse 18, Jesus has been talking about how um, he is the stone that the builder rejected. And, you know, there's nothing ever neutral. Something is always being built in the spirit realm. And it is, uh, it's the kingdom of God. Um, but we either partner with the kingdom of God being built or we fight against it. And when we fight against it, we're, we're fighting for the enemy's um, camp to be built. It's a camp versus a kingdom. And, um, and Jesus says he has become the chief cornerstone. He was the one that the builder rejected. So, so the world rejected Jesus. And um, of course, God accepted Jesus as he, on our behalf to accept us. And he became the chief cornerstone. And we're all living stones that are a part of this kingdom of God that is here and is being, um, being displayed in the earth. And we're going to go this whole week into the kingdom of God. Um, but Luke 20, verse 18 specifically says, whoever falls on that stone, meaning Jesus, will be broken. But on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. So there's a falling, there's a, volunteer, a voluntary, voluntary falling on the chief cornerstone. And when we fall on him, there is a brokenness. Um, again, Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near. He is so near to the brokenhearted. Like, let's just, let's just be there for a second. Just experience his nearness. There is no place in your heart that, that isn't hurting and broken and disappointed and like realizing, wow, this is not how it was meant to be. Whether it's something personal for you or the collectiveness of what we're going through. This is not how it was meant to be. Like there is a broken hearted place in us and that place, he is so near. Just allow yourself to, to acknowledge the nearness of, of him in that place. He is literally just his name away. Jesus. Jesus. I remember um, being on a road trip with my mom and my daughters when they were all pretty young. And we were going to the beach. We were so excited. And my parents had kept this conversion van over the years. It had shag carpet in it. I think it was like orange. Let me tell you, this was quite the van. And we knew the van was kind of on its last leg, but it was so fun to take road trips in and the kids loved it, had the whole bench seat in the back. So we were piled in there. My mom was driving. We were very close to arriving to um, the Gulf Coast in Florida. The roads were super hot. It was summertime and our front tire on this van blew. Um, and the I'm sitting in the front seat with my mom. I know I think the kids were buckled in. They should have been buckled in. But the van literally we lost control of the van and the van tumped. It went so far over. You know how in a conversion van there's like um there's this 
step that you step up on to to get into the van and it runs the whole length of the van and that one step we went so far over that that step fell off it was it was crushed and fell off but what came out of my mouth like i didn't think it it was i don't think it's because i was so godly or anything like that is i'm just jesus 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 i'm shouting jesus over and over again it seemed like forever because we lost control of the van and it was my mom was like she was the hero she was somehow holding on i think it was so god but this van rocked all the way over one side and all the way over the other and then just as if she pulled it into the side lane out of traffic um and there was an ambulance that happened to be behind us that when it saw us losing control it turned on its lights so you know here we are swerving all over and it kept kept us from you know causing a mess there anyway we were fine we were fine our hearts were racing um i think justice might have gotten a little um bruise from something i can't remember what her story was on that but um the point is i was speaking the name of jesus like jesus over everything and since that time like it's it's become more of a go-to on in, with intentionality when something's going on that is like jesus what else can i say but the name of jesus all authority all love all everything is in that name in in his identity and who and what he is and um what i want to get into this week is that jesus is his number one message he lived his number one message his number one message was the kingdom of god jesus is the kingdom of god personified whereas holy spirit is wisdom personified jesus is the kingdom of god personified a couple more scriptures on our, our brokenness um, we see that Jesus wept he was very much in touch with areas of disappointment if for no other reason on our behalf we know in John eleven thirty five 35 that Jesus wept because of the whole scene there with Lazarus even though he knew he was gonna raise him up from the dead he connected to our broken hearts and and what that would represent for us, G, uh, Lazarus's four days in the tomb, and, and just the confusion and the heartbreak of, of his family, Mary and Martha, they were just so crushed and disappointed that Jesus hadn't shown up. Like they knew that he could and would, and he didn't. And um, in those places of our own hearts, Jesus cried for you. He saw the brokenness that that all of humanity would go through in this place of mystery and contradiction that we find ourselves often living in. And then in Luke 19, 41, he shows us his capacity, not just to weep for us on a relational individual level and the brokenheartedness that we go through, but he wept over the city of Jerusalem. It says that Jesus saw the city and wept over it because he knew what they collectively were about to go through um, and all that that generation of of jews his people were going to go through and there's um jesus identifies with all of the brokenness that we feel collectively as a society even now even though he sees the victory and he sees where this is all headed he's with us in this place of mystery and contradiction and the brokenheartedness that comes from it. Um, David related, he said in Psalm 31, 12, I'm like a broken vessel. And evidently the way they would do pottery um, and what they would use for their vessels, whatever they would eat out of, drink out of, is um, they would throw them and they would break something with that i don't know there's a process of breaking related to becoming a vessel that can hold and carry him um and then of course i don't remember what song it is but break our hearts with the things that break your heart so this week we're just gonna embrace our identity and our brokenness and when you feel the brokenness of your own story where you're still waiting on his redemption 
when you feel the brokenness of what is happening in the nation, know that he is near. He is near to the brokenhearted. Ah. I'm going to get into this starting tomorrow. This is um, one of Johnny's favorite books and becoming one of my favorites. Um, I haven't read it like he has, but it's by E. Stanley Jones, The Unshakable Kingdom and The Unchanging Person. I'm going to read you two quick um, teaser quotes from here. E. Stanley Jones is... Um, already in heaven, but he lived from 1884 to 1973 as a missionary and an evangelist for 70 years. This was his last book that he wrote as an 87-year-old man. He died two years later. This book is literally, it is, it is so deep. I can't, the reason why I haven't read it like Johnny has is because I can't get past the introduction. I mean, I have like almost every word underlined just in the introduction, but here's what he said. He said, I saw the person of Christ just as important as the message of Christ, which is the kingdom of God. The two were inseparably linked. Let me read that again. I saw the person of Christ just as important as the message of Christ, the kingdom of God. The two were inseparably linked. And then he quotes H.G. Wells. Why, here is the most radical proposal ever presented to the mind of man. The proposal to replace the present world order with God's order, the kingdom of God. Here is the most radical proposal ever presented to the mind of man. The proposal is to replace the present world order. Please, Jesus. <laughs> Replace the present world order with God's order, the kingdom of God. And then one more quote. Uh, e. Stanley Jones says, The best and most influential man who ever lived, Jesus Christ, made the kingdom of God his central emphasis. If Jesus made the kingdom of God the center of his message and the center of his endeavor, then the greatest need of man is to rediscover the kingdom of God. So um, I've got a bunch more I want to read to you from the intro of that book tomorrow related to the kingdom of God. But um, the song that I have for you to listen to today, you're going to want to put it on repeat, find all the different versions, and then find your favorite one. Mine is the one that my dad suggested. It's called I Speak Jesus. I Speak Jesus. And it's by um, Here Be Lions. Here Be Lions. And it's in the title here if you need to see that. The, uh, the most amazing version is by two men. It's an acoustic version. So if you, if you type in when you're searching for it, I Speak Jesus Acoustic. And it should come up. But um, there's another one that The Ramp did. It's a live version by Catherine Mullins and The Ramp Worship. I Speak Jesus, that one's like, if you're in the intercession mode and you just want to go at it, then that's a good version too. Um, all right, let's pray, broken ones. Thank you for your nearness, Jesus. Thank you that in the simplicity of your name is everything. And so we just speak Jesus right now over our own hearts, over our own bodies, Jesus. And we speak Jesus over one another. We are, we are your body and we just speak Jesus over each other's hearts, our minds, our emotions, our spirit man, Jesus. And we speak Jesus over our families and over our nation. We speak Jesus over those who don't know you yet. And like a cloud that is about to burst forth with, with the heaviest and greatest downpour of rain, your name hangs over us. And all that is in your name, your kingdom, let it come, let it come, let it come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
have an awesome day and I look forward to getting more about uh, more into this book about the kingdom and Jesus's message with you the rest of this week. Thanks.